As I'm sure a lot of you probably know this already, and I've said this much before, but a fully backwards compatible PlayStation 3 with the full PS2 SoC on the board, that's the Emotion Engine and graphic synthesizer built right in, that's pretty much the ultimate PlayStation, right? You've got three generations of playability on one console, we all know why it's great. However, much like a PS5 today where it plays the vast majority of PS4 titles, there's still about 100 games on there that don't work 100% correctly, and that's the same deal for those early PS3 models. So with full PS2 support on there, there are still some titles that will give you some issues, and we've got those games right here, so let's take a look at them and find out what they do on a fully backwards compatible PlayStation 3. So we're just going to start off right away with Silent Hill 2. This one's got a pretty interesting problem, which really it doesn't stop you from playing the whole game from start to finish, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. Probably always worth pointing out that for Silent Hill 2, uh, actually the PlayStation 2 version is still considered like the best way to play this game, which is why Silent Hill 2 has commanded such a high price uh, for the physical PS2 copy. Uh, the PC version also is very good as well, but the PS3 HD collection did not... It was, you lost a lot of the charm with that one. So this alongside all the other Silent Hill games, you, you want to get this. So apparently one of the issues that you should be running into when playing Silent Hill 2 is that one of James' legs will disappear uh, when standing still or idle, which uh, right now doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, and there's, I guess it's also worth bringing up right now, there's not many resources online that have completely cataloged uh, all the issues with some of these games on these various PS3 models because the one other thing to point out is that the uh well the following models that came out right that removed the emotion engine so that would be the pal 60 gigabyte ps3s or the um cch c i believe the 80 gig models in north america um so you lose a bit of compatibility there and what i think sony put out at the time was that it was uh, out of the entire ps2 library those models have about 94 percent coverage which is really good but out of thousands of games you're looking at um what a hundred a few hundred games that are going to be having some problems and so there's a lot of titles we could look at for that however the full backwards compatibility you know hardware based models those ones uh, should have about 98 to 99 percent coverage so there's really not many good resources online cataloging these problems Problems. However, I do have something linked down below that um, covers a good amount of PS2 and PS1 games as well, because the PlayStation 1 games, that's important to remember that all PS3 models can play those, but that's through software emulation. And so that's another area where you, you might run into um, some weird situations, you know, graphical artifacting, things like that. So after about 45 minutes to an hour trying to replicate the issue on my end, I could not get it to come up at all. And I did find on YouTube there was one video where, and I'm sure I could find more, but for a split second, James' leg does disappear on a 60 gigabyte PS3. So there you go. That's what would happen. Maybe there's a few other problems throughout uh, the entire game, but I'm not going to play it from start to finish. But it seems clear that the game is pretty good for the most part. I mean, we've got current generation games today that have more issues than this one does being played on a PS3. Next, we're going to try FIFA 2003. This game in particular uh, is supposed to have some graphical and frame rate issues, and that's all that's being reported, so we'll see what that looks like. I think I've played a FIFA game like once. This will be number two. I apologize to any of my European viewers where I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. And it's not even it's not even an American like I like football thing. I, I don't care for sports to begin with. I'm a loser. Well so far everything looks fine. Nothing terrible as far as I can see. But this is another case where I you know, you might have to play the game for quite a while to really run into a major frame rate problem. Or any sort of uh, weird graphical, you know, abnormality. Um, you know, games are not like movies where I can validate most of it in an hour, or at least half of it in an hour, right? That's not really the case. This one seems fine so far. Oh, they done did it. Oh, Patrick. Alright, uh, I'm not seeing anything right now. I'm sure it's there in some 
in some way, but it might be like Silent Hill where it's very intermittent. So this one also looks pretty good. Not sure how many people are looking to play FIFA 03 on a PS3, but you are looking okay, I think. This next one should be pretty simple. It's Dragon Ball Z Sagas, and the only thing wrong with this game, apparently, is that on the title screen, it jitters up and down, and then once you're actually in there and playing, it should be it should be fine. Uh, and we'll see if that is the case, but um, in theory, we should be able to take a look at this and be out of here no problem. <laughs> it, yeah, it's there. It's It's doing a little jitter. I mean, that's very slight, very tame, almost uh, teasing you if, if it were. Like, yes, I work, but will I work the whole way through? Probably. Uh, it seems to have a slight frame rate issue. It's a little sluggish. But that might just be the how the game is. I'll try it on a genuine PS2 after this. Just to confirm those suspicions. Spartan Total Warrior, another game where just the opening has a problem. It's supposed to freeze and also the audio uh, goes out of sync. So let's take a look. faces her greatest enemy. Oh, well, nothing so far. Well, that I'm assuming that was the opening scene and it played flawlessly. No problems at all. The gameplay seems good, but that wasn't uh, that wasn't supposed to be a problem. I, it seemed like that was the opening sequence that I just sat through, and maybe there's like another one, but it seems like the game's starting now. So I think this one is also seemingly okay. This one might be like the others where we can't really replicate it reliably, but in Burnout 3 Takedown, which is a fantastic game, by the way, uh, there's virtual memory card problems, so we might have issues trying to save or reload, and we'll see if we can <clears throat> get that to get that to happen. Burnout 3 Takedown. Been a while since I played this one. Long time. I'm gonna have to like mute this. <laughs> it's like you know, licensed music. Okay, so it recognizes uh, the memory card there. <clears throat> we'll just play and see if we can keep saving. Does Burnout 3 have rubber banding? Yes, it does. Because <laughs> I can guarantee you, <laughs> I was a mile ahead of that guy. This is why I like Need for Speed Underground, or at least the first one. I can't remember for the second one, but the first one did not have rubber banding. So if you were like, you know... Laying it down good on them, they weren't coming back. I like that. And if you could crash, if you could get another car to crash or hit a wall or something, like they're just knocked out for the whole race. You could see on the map, like they're super far behind. Um, I wish more game. I, I wish more racing games had that integrity to actually reward skill. Save successful. That's only the second race. I'm sure it comes up more frequently, or later in the game, right? Um, so it's not like it won't have problems, but apparently if you do run into that issue, you can still just keep retrying and it should recognize it eventually. Because uh, one little trick, you know, on PS3 is you can assign the slots manually for virtual memory cards as if you're, you know, removing one or then inserting another one, right? So that's another way to solve any problems you might have relating to memory cards but burnout seems to be okay now we all know that wolverine was announced for ps5 very recently and out of pure coincidence out of the thousands of ps2 games that um, are playable 
This one is not. X-Men Origins Wolverine. So allegedly this game should not play at all. Only the Uncaged Edition plays, which this is not it. Um, in fact, the product identifier SLUS21880, this should not be playable. So I'm, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen here. Because so far we've had really good results. Like, is it even going to be recognized? Is it not going to boot? I don't know what's going to happen here. Shows up. This is not the Uncaged Edition. Developed exclusively for the PlayStation 2 computer entertainment system. This was a PS2 exclusive? In 2009? Well, it's not like the console completely rejected the game. It just doesn't... It seems like under any sort of load, which, I mean, the game just started. Only a few enemies on screen. And it buckles pretty hard. Like, even climbing up that ledge was... Slow. Yeah, this is, uh... Doesn't work that well. Frame rate problems. I notice some pop in. Uh, there's like an input delay. <clears throat> I'll test it on native PS2 hardware to see if there's a, a massive difference because it could just be like a poor PS2 game. But yeah, this one doesn't look. Uh, this one doesn't seem very well. Next we have Orphan Scion of Sorcery. So this game, which is a North American launch title, is supposed to lock up during cutscenes, forcing constant restarts, which would be a huge pain. Um, but as we've seen already, a lot of these games don't actually um, have the problems that are being reported, or if they do, they're very far and few between. So let's see if Orphan is, um, if the cutscenes are really that problematic. Now. Monsters! <laughs> What? Yeah, big ones. They're everywhere. Hurry. Come on, let's get off the ship. <clears throat> well, I just sat through about, I don't know, six minutes of cutscenes. Nothing happened so far. A lot of in-game cutscenes. Which would be worrying if it locks up during that, but I... Haven't seen it happen yet. Well, I can say that this game does have a lot of in-game cutscenes. So if it does lock up at some point, that would that would get annoying. But, uh, you know, 20 minutes so far and there's been like 12 to 14 separate in-game cutscenes. Nothing happened yet, so... Might be the same case where further on you'll run into it, um, but also worth mentioning that for this game, it doesn't play whatsoever, allegedly, on CCHC and CCHE models. Um, and oftentimes, when you look at the list of games that are not compatible, if there is a game that has a problem on a fully backwards compatible PS3, then it has even worse issues on the ones without the Emotion Engine. So... Um, this might be a game where it was really bad on the other one, like not playable whatsoever, but on this particular PS3, the problems were weathered down to just, uh, freezing issues during cutscenes, which I have not encountered just yet. Doesn't mean they're not there, but I have not been able to replicate the issue. Next up, we have Guitaru Man, and this one, like DBZ Sagas, is supposed to have a jittery title screen. Uh, but also frequent crashes during multiplayer. Now, how frequent is that really going to be? Not sure. Will it show up within 20, 30 minutes? I don't know, but we're about to find out. When's the last time you saw this game? It's actually expensive. It's about 100 bucks. This one is a little rare. Well, nothing there. No. Yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> but will it be much different when I'm in the menus?
No, nothing, nothing wrong right now. This is good. This is gonna look ugly, but we're just trying to get the game to mess up here. No crashing. I win again against myself. So it might be other stages. It might be different songs or whatever, whatever applies to this game. I haven't tested it too long, but it's running very smoothly. I don't know. I might not be meeting the specific requirements, but so far this game also looks, uh, looks fine. Uh, we've got another one here where it's supposed to not play whatsoever, but Tomb Raider Underworld. So, from what I can see, it says it should not play. I have a feeling that it is going to play. Let's see. I mean, maybe it'll be like uh, Wolverine, where, sure, it's playable, but, like, just a lot of, you know, frame rate problems or just input like a huge input latency or whatever the case may be. It's just like not really, not truly a playable game. Maybe that'll happen. No, <laughs> I thought it was going to get, I thought it was going to get stuck on that screen. We, we do have some frame rate problems. It's very slight. Well, slight, I mean, I don't know. It's I'm guessing it's in the 20s, like low 20s right now. Okay. Yeah, it's getting worse. Yeah, is this like another case of like just this game isn't good on PS2 or... Is this not, is this game not great through backwards compatibility? Yeah, it's, it's the same thing as Wolverine, actually. It's like a lot of input latency and then frame rate problems. Um, and this is also a late life cycle PS2 game. Weird that that's like the only trend I've noticed so far. Okay. Here's a pretty well-known PS2 game that does have some bugs, or at least it should have them, Persona 4. So in this game, uh, towards the bottom left corner, there's text that'll pop up to tell you where you are or a little notification about things that you can pick up. And that apparently does not display on a PS3. That and internal memory card data may disappear randomly, which, as we've seen before, that may be hard to replicate, but we'll see what happens. The feels. Aren't you? I just got to get to my room so I can see the button prompts or lack thereof. Oh, well, look at that. Living room popped up. So that's normal. That also popped up. The check with the uh, X button. So this one also appears to be working okay, at least initially. Maybe it doesn't work all that well around town. So it's going to take me a while until I can really open up the game and explore around town, but at least in the Dojima residence, I can see all the button prompts come up just fine. So again, it might be a sort of a, a late game thing where that's where you'll run into issues, but so far it looks okay. Maybe it's something where it's uh, only reserved for CCHE and C models. But right now, once again, um, the full backwards compatible models are turning out to do well here. So that's basically everything. And with that, what did we really learn here? Because I am surprised that I didn't have at least five or six games where I could reliably replicate the issue on screen over and over again. But it's also worth mentioning, I can't play every game from start to finish, which would take way too long. But each game got about 30 minutes to an hour of testing in the early areas which, you know, that's about what I can do. And so far, they all played really good. Um, it's something where it speaks more to the PS3s, uh, well, this particular model's, you know, hardware support for PS2 games. So 
even though it's 98 to 99% compatibility, that 1% is still playable for the most part, it seems. Uh, so these really are the ones to get, and I'm sure if we looked at the other PS3 models, we could test a lot more games and also probably run into the issues that we're talking about. But so far, this thing is really good. So when it comes to breaking PS2 compatibility on this console, it's very tough to do. <laughs> um, I can't test every PS2 game out there, but for the ones that were reported online you know, 15 years ago, it seems like this console is still doing pretty good with them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.